Welcome to the Edgar Rice Burroughs Mini Podcast, episode number five. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books on aspects of pre-digital pop culture, such as the pulp magazines of the early 20th century, uh, old-time radio, classic newspaper comic strips and comic books, and other such items. I also keep a blog about such things at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff. Uh, you can find a link to my Amazon.com author page th there as well and buy my books and make me wealthy beyond the dreams of avarice. Uh, now, these mini podcasts are to supplement the full length podcasts I do with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell. And Jess is one of the administrators of the For the Love of All Things Edgar Rice Burroughs Facebook group, which is, I believe, the best Facebook group uh, about Edgar Rice Burroughs and his writings on that social platform. And that is not a criticism at all of other Edgar Rice Burroughs fan clubs on Facebook. There's a number of them, several truly excellent ones. I, th I just think that Jess and his partner, Lily Pop, do the best one at For the Love of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Now, I'm bringing that up because there is one thing that gets Jess's blood pressure resin and makes his head explode. And that is when people come on the group and ask the question, why doesn't Tarzan have a beard? And it just drives Jess nuts, driving him to scream, uh, you know, read the book, read the book, read the book over and over again, because it's in the book. So the, the purpose of this mini podcast is to quickly explain why Tarzan shaves and also why he keeps his hair cut. He was, after all, raised by apes who weren't concerned at all about, uh, um, about uh, facial hair or hair length. And um, um, in fact, when you think about it without knowing the books, why wouldn't Tarzan just be glad when he grow a beard? It would make him hairier like the apes that he thought of as his family. But while he was growing up, Tarzan... Uh, gained access to the cabin that had been built by his human father. Uh, his parents had been shipwrecked or stranded, rather, marooned on the coast of Africa. They had built a cabin, which they were living in. Tarzan was born in that cabin. His parents were, were die, died soon after, and he was adapted, adopted as a baby by the apes. Now, when he gained access as a young man, as a young child, to this cabin, he discovered all the books that had been left there when they were marooned, all the stuff they were taking with them to a colonial outpost in uh, Africa where uh, uh, John Clayton, Tarzan's dad, had been assigned. It included books for kids because they knew that Jane, his, that his mom, not Jane, but his mom, was, uh, was expecting a child and they wanted to be prepared for that. So it included a picture book that included things like A is for ape, B is for boy, and so on. Over the years... Tarzan taught himself to read using that book and a dictionary and several other books in the cabin. He didn't know how to speak English. He didn't know how to pronounce any of the words, but he knew how to read. And he had realized that he was an M-A-N, a man, and that the rest of the people he lived with, the beings he lived with, were A-P-E, apes. He knew he was different. So when he began to grow a beard, it actually worried him. Was he turning into an ape? Was he no longer a man? Um, and I'm going to quote directly from the first novel from Tarzan of the Apes, published in 1912. He, that being Tarzan, was worried because he had not clothing to indicate to all the jungle folks that he was a man and not an ape. And grave doubt often entered his mind as to whether he might not yet become an ape. Was not hair commencing to grow upon his face? All the apes had hair upon theirs, but the black men were entirely hairless, with a few exceptions. True, he had seen pictures in his books of men with great masses of hair upon lip and cheek and chin, but nevertheless, Tarzan was afraid. So almost daily, he whetted his keen knife, and I will break away from the quote, quote right here to say that this is his father's hunting knife that he found in a cabin and quickly realized made an effective tool and weapon. Almost daily, back to the quote now, almost daily, he whetted his keen knife and scraped and whittled at his young beard to eradicate this degrading emblem, emblem of apehood. So he learned to shave, rudely and painfully, it is true, but nevertheless, effectively. So that is why Tarzan never had a beard. Now, later on, when he grew up and he learned about civilization and he married Jane and was living on an estate in Africa, he probably did start using a regular razor, but he was in the habit of shaving almost uh, from the moment of puberty on because he was initially worried that he was turning into an ape after he had realized that he was different from the apes. Now, what about his haircut, though? I mean, we always see him often 
portrayed with long hair. And wouldn't you expect him when he's found uh, by, by um, uh, when he's brought back to civilization, when he's around, what, 20 years old, I think, wouldn't you have expected them to have really, really, really long hair? So whatever the length of his hair would have been, why wasn't it hugely long? Well, to, the, to find that out, we have to jump to book number six in the series, The Jungle Tales of Tarzan. And this is a really fun book that it has a series of short stories that flash back to Tarzan's time growing up with the apes. Um, uh, and in one of those stories, this is in chapter eight of the book, uh, we read this. Um, Tarzan at the moment, to set it up, Tarzan is looking for something to do. You know, he's looking for something to entertain himself with. Um, and now to quote from the book, a strand of black hair fell across one eye. He brushed it aside with a palm of a hand and a toss of his head. It suggested something to do. So he sought his quiver, which lay crashed in a bowl of the lightning ribbon tree. I will explain by this time that a tribe of cannibals had moved into the area. And from observing them and from, quite frankly, stealing his weapons and practicing with them, he had become quite adept with a bow and arrow. Back to the book. Removing the arrows, he turned the quiver upside down, emptying upon the ground the contents of its bottom. It's his few treasures. Among them was a bit of flat stone and a shell which he had picked up from the beach near his father's cabin. With great care, he rubbed the edge of the shell back and forth on the flat stone until its soft edge was quite fine and sharp. He worked much as a barber does who hones his razor, and with every evidence of similar practice. But his proficiency was the result of years of painstaking effort. Unaided, he had, he had, unaided, he had worked out a method of his own for putting an edge upon the shell. He even tested it with the ball of his thumb. And when it met his approval, he grasped a wisp of hair that fell across his eyes. Uh, he gr grasped it between thumb and f first finger of his left hand and sawed upon it with a sharpened shell until it was severed. All around his head, he went until his black shock was rudely bobbed with a ragged bang in the front. For the, the appearance of it, he cared for nothing. For, but in the matter of safety and comfort, it meant everything. A lock of hair falling in one's eyes at the wrong moment might mean all the difference between life and death, while straggly strands hanging down upon one's back were most uncomfortable, especially when wet with dew or rain or perspiration. So that, once again, was from The Jungle Tales of Tarzan. So from the first book, Tarzan of the Apes, and the six books, The Jungle Tales of Tarzan, we now learn that Tarzan both taught himself how to shave and how to give himself a haircut while he was still a young man living with the apes. And we learned the motivation, the quite reasonable motivations behind those, uh, the efforts to learn to do those things. So that is why Tarzan does not have a beard. That way, that's why he does not have hair hanging down to his ankles. It's all there, as Jess often screams at the top of his voice. Read the books, and you'll find these things out. So that is the end of this mini podcast. Thank you for listening. Please continue to look for the full length uh, podcast that I do with Jess and Scott, where we uh, speak in depth, usually about one of the novels, occasionally about other Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, um, inspired materials, such as the movies, the radio shows and so on. Um, and I think those are really worthwhile to listen to, but I do appreciate your taking a few minutes to listen to this one. Thank you very much.